I'm born in Nigeria and I was raised up in West Africa, so Nigeria, Senegal, and then I came to Ghana. So we are all established. I have my brother here, um, I have my, my partner, and I am here. And before, my parents were also here, but they retired and they're back in France. Ghana has one of the most perfect waves in the world, and it's in Gomoa City, and I love it. Okay, so I used to speak fluently the Nigerian language, but as I'm in Ghana, I picked up like Etisang, Eye, Nansue. Okay, so hi guys, my name is Fleur, I'm French, and um, so I work in a bakery, I, or I founded a bakery um, since now a bit more than two years in Accra. I'm born in Nigeria and I was raised up in West Africa, so Nigeria, Senegal, and then I came to Ghana for a work opportunity for a South African company. I was working in investment and strategy and I stayed with them, I think, a year and a half, something like that. And then I was like, okay, time for me to create my own business and that's how it started. Uh, amazing. I mean, I've never asked myself too many questions. <laughs> that was my life and I think I was very privileged because uh, it was an amazing experience to share uh, that much culture and, uh, you know, just to see another part of the world rather than being stuck in your own little village in France. <laughs> Me coming from, for example, Nigeria, I was impressed by how organized Ghana was. Um, also, how big it was, because it's true that, I mean, Ghana is a great uh, country uh, concerning economy, politics, but no one really knows how it is. And Accra is a super, is super big city and very alive. So nightlife, day life, um, yeah, I was just impressed generally by, by Accra, mm -hmm. definitely. Ah, that was the most scariest decision, I think, of my life, kind of, because I was living kind of a comfortable life, you know, expat life where we're not going to lie, an expat has a, the house is paid by the company, you have a car by the company, insurance. I mean, you're kind of super comfortable. And then from a day to another saying, okay, I'm leaving all this behind me and I'm starting my own business, hoping that one day it will work. It's a huge challenge, but I think I'm driven by challenge every day in my life. So it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Scary, but exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the, world, the word hustle, <laughs> that would qualify everything. No, but it started super small. Huh? I mean, let's put things back in their context. Uh, it started my mom, me, and one staff. That's how it started. And my mom was even the one. So she actually really started the, the business because it was her idea. Um, she was actually taking the baguette, so the bread, in her backpack, and she was cycling to the French school to go and deliver it. So it started like that. And then I came in and said, okay, guys, we can really do something about it. So we started marketing, we started Instagram, social media. We started testing new recipes, reading books, because um, I'm not a baker. I've never been a baker and I studied international relations, so nothing to do with that. Um, so we really educated ourselves on the sector of bakery and pastry. And then little by little, when people were responding to our products, um, I would feel the need to hire and then we would hire. So I was lucky with the staff because I don't think I struggled that much. So my staff is mostly young and happy to learn. So we train them from scratch and yeah, they're still with us. So that's good. Okay, so initially it was very much the expat community. And then um, when, COVID, when COVID arrived, all, obviously all the expats traveled. So I was super stressed, like, oh my gosh, to whom, who will buy my bread? And actually it's crazy. Nowadays, I think a big percentage of my market is local. And I've attracted the interest of, yeah, Ghanaians that want to know more about my products. So I have 
Um, I have some people that will buy occasionally, so if they have an event like a birthday, celebration, whatever. And then I have those where um, those who are looking maybe for healthy options and they really want to know what's in their bread. So they come in a daily, it's a daily habit to come to my bakery and pick up their bread. Honestly, the funkiest bread from um, sun-dried tomato, cheese, olive, to very healthy bread, so whole wheat with grains, even we offer um, malted wheat flour. Um, and right now I'm looking into studying more the local cereals, so trying to work more with what we have. And I think one very interesting cereal at the moment is Fonio. Um, then we go to Viennoiserie, which we call in France, this is all the croissants. And finally, all the cakes. So um, it can be tea cakes or it can be tarts. It can be cupcakes. Yeah. I mean, we do a bit of everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's been four years I'm in Ghana. Life has been great, but not that easy. So as a, as a foreigner, I'm, com I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, life is not, uh, you know, I'm not flying in the sky like a little butterfly. Uh, there's a lot of challenges um, that I am confronted to, which are, I would say, not part of uh, how I've been raised. So, so like daily challenges that, f for instance, would be very easy um, where I'm coming from, but then here everyone has their own perception of um, how things are supposed to be mm -hmm. and uh, one very important thing I have a lot of issue with this corruption so and unfortunately this has come into the daily life of having a company so having a company, um, of course, you have to register, you have to do the all the hygiene requirements. I mean, there's all a bunch of requirements that, uh, which, are, which is normal. I mean, uh, you go in each country, you have to do that. But then, weirdly enough, um, I was very naive at the beginning saying, okay, I'll just go to the office myself and do all my papers myself. But geez, I took like more than six months and after six months, I still had nothing. Because every day I would go to the office, they would say, oh, this document is missing, this, this, and you have to pay this. And I was like, geez, don't you have one list that I have to follow? And no one was able to give it to me. So then I spoke a bit with people around me, which I knew, I knew that was not something I didn't know, but I was in my head, I was like, no, I can do it on my, on my own. And then they just said, please, Phil, just hire someone that will do it for you. I was like, why would I hire someone to fill my papers? I mean, I know how to write and to follow instructions. And at the end, that was the best thing I, had, I could do because I got everything done in one month. Whereas in six months, I was still struggling with nothing. <laughs> so yeah, it's a reality. Mm -hmm. I cannot deny. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't happen to other people. But to me, that was my experience as a foreigner here in Ghana. Yeah. Also, um, you have to deal with everything that is ECG, water, and you have crazy stuff happening to you every day. Mm, you don't know why. <laughs> and when you try to find explanation, there is no explanation and they're just asking you to pay. So yeah, this is a very negative side. But apart from that, I mean, I'm still here, I'm still enjoying, I'm still taking the challenge and I'm loving my life. Mm -hmm. So what is important in my message is that you can do great things, you can love your life, but um, on the side, there's a lot of hustle that you have to deal with every day. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm saying it because I'm in Ghana, but it could be exactly the same thing in another country, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, my huge decision of just creating my company. I mean, that, I think that's a huge moment. And then um, convincing my uh, life partner to come to Ghana and move in. So he moved in and he also works here. So we are all established. I have my brother here. 
um, I have my my partner and I am here and before my parents were also here but they retired and they're back in France mm -hmm. but they also stayed here um, I think 11 years in Ghana and they loved it oh wow I visited all over Ghana but I really really like um, Vli waterfalls Ho, because um, I'm uh, very much of a nature nature person and I think that the waterfalls are really amazing and then there's a hike that you do in five hours it's really difficult huh? but um, <laughs> when you get to the top the view is just amazing it's it's inc breathtaking like honestly I was very very impressed and also I love going to Gomoa Fete because I love surfing and um, Ghana has one of the most perfect waves in the world and it's in Gomoa Fete and I love it. Mm -hmm. Local dishes that you like? Um, uh, granite soup with rice balls, that's my favorite. Uh -huh. Have you picked any of the local languages or you speak the Nigerian language because you grew up there? Okay, so I used to speak fluently the Nigerian language but as I'm in Ghana, I picked up like Etisang, Eye, Nausue and then um, Medasi, I mean little words that when I'm in the bakery, for example, if I hear my staff talking, I can understand them, but that's a secret. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and no, I know how to greet people, thank them and ask them how they are. I think it's the most important. Thank you. You're welcome.